Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. Just off the bus, eh? If you're looking for a real deal Hawaiian vacation, you got off at the right spot. Actually, I'm looking for somebody named Big Island Mike. That's me. You by yourself? Not really. My name's Nancy Drew. Well, just in case whoever told you about this place didn't give you the lowdown, here it is. You sign up with Big Island Mike, you'll live like a real Hawaiian. Work like they work, play like they play. No tourist stuff. From me, you get authentic. So you're kind of a travel agent? See, I'm like a tailor. Only I don't make clothes, I make vacations. Real, honest-to-goodness Hawaiian vacations. Custom-made to fit just you and you alone. You like the beach? I'll get you to the beach, but I'll also keep you busy. Busy doing things real Hawaiians have done for a thousand years. And you'll have a good time doing it, I'll make sure. In fact, I've got a couple of guys staying here about your age. They're from the mainland, too. I got those boys surfing, shelling, fishing, snorkeling, everything. You sign up, you'll do everything too. Maybe even at the same time as them, huh? Sounds interesting, but I'm just here to pick up some car keys. Oh, you're the wahine who's gonna be working up there in the rainforest with Dr. Kim studying bugs. You're gonna have to pick them up and put them in jars and stuff. Well, I hope so. I think bugs are really interesting. Better to be working for Dr. Kim than up at the Healy Healy. That doctor there, he makes people mess with stuff way worse than bugs. What's the Healy Healy? The Healy Healy Research Center. Everything up there's a big mystery. People who work at Healy Healy, they never stay long. And when they leave, 
They don't talk. Be that as it may, I'm supposed to get a key from you? Dr. Kim arranged for you to use one of my rigs. Got the key right here, but know what? I'm not gonna give it to you. You're not? A Big Island Mike immersion excursion beats chasing bugs around the jungle any day. And to prove it, I'm not going to give you the key until you go to the beach, collect some shells, and make a necklace for me. You can put the shells you find in here. Make me an Aloha necklace. There's a picture of it over at the necklace making table. But I... I really think I should go meet Dr. Kim like I'm supposed to. You make the necklace, I give you the key. Only you know what? You're not going to want it anymore. You're going to walk on the beach, look for shells, sit and string them. You're going to get so relaxed, you're going to come back in here and say, You were right, Big Island Mike. Forget the bug doctor. Sign me up. You'll see. Looks like you need some kind of special money for this. I barely have any real money. Try it and trade it. Must be part of the immersion excursion thing. A little surfer shack. Too bad it's closed. Whoever runs it is probably off surfing. Hello? So, did you arrive okay? Ned, hi! Oh, perfect timing. I just got here. In fact, I'm on the beach. The bug doctor's on the beach? No, I have to collect shells and make a necklace before I can get the keys she's left for me. It's a long story. Well, I wish I could be there with you. Believe me, it's done nothing but rain non-stop since I dropped you off at the airport. The sky's just this constant shade of gray. It'd be depressing even with you here. But with you not here, it's... Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this, but Frank and Joe Hardy are here. What? Are, are you sure? Positive. Hey, listen, I'll call you later, okay? But... Bye. Nancy, what are you doing here? I just got here. I'm going to be helping this entomologist Dad heard about do field work for the next two weeks. What are you guys doing here? We got here yesterday. Believe it or not, we're on assignment. Joe, keep it down. Richard Aikens, the CEO of Aikens Biotech, he hired us to do kind of a background check on Pua Mapu and her father, Mike Mapu. She's an up-and-coming world-class surfer. He runs a local business called Big Island Mike's Immersion Excursions. No kidding. I'm supposed to pick up a car at Big Island Mike's. What does this Aikens guy need a background check for? He's thinking about using Pua in the ad campaign for one of his products. He wants to make sure there aren't any skeletons in either of the Mapu's closets before he makes her an offer. Since she teaches surfing for her dad, we signed up for one of his immersion excursions so we could get to know her and make sure she's as squeaky clean as she seems. Aikens figured someone who was closer to her own age could find out a lot more than some private investigator. So you were basically hired to vacation in Hawaii and learn how to surf. Is that what you're saying? Don't worry. As soon as the opportunity presents itself, we'll be doing some hardcore snooping, too. Yeah. Aikens wants us to make sure Mapu's business is also squeaky clean. But the guy never leaves his office, which so far has made rummaging through his paperwork impossible. So you're doing fieldwork for an entomologist? Yep. Just me and Dr. Kim and a couple thousand of her closest insect-type friends. Out there in the jungle. Well, watch out for Kane Okala. Aw, oh, Joe. Watch out for who? Kane Okala. That's Hawaiian for rough-skinned man. He's this legendary guy who got half burned up in a volcano a millennium or two ago, and now whenever something really bad happens on the island, people start saying they've seen him in the jungle. He doesn't like people messing with his island, see? So he goes on these rampages. Apparently his temper is as nasty as his complexion. And there have been a lot of sightings lately, probably because of the pineapples. What's wrong with the pineapples? 
The pineapples have been growing so poorly on this part of the island that people say there may not even be a local crop this year. But nobody can say why. Although I'm willing to bet this Connie O'Cala guy could. Joe. If he really existed, which of course he does not. Happy, Frank? Well, I better get going. Good luck, you guys. I have my cell phone, so keep in touch. You too. In fact, if there's anything you need out there... Food, toiletries, monster repellent... Call us anytime, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. See you, Nance. Big Island Mike told me to make an Aloha necklace. Ah, here we go. So what shells do I need? They're beautiful. I'll just give this to Mr. Mapu and be on my way. You finished the necklace! If you could give the extra shells I collected to those two guys from the mainland, that'd be great. May I keep the necklace I made? Sorry. My idea? My necklace. But the rig key is yours. Thank you. Hey! One more thing. Kane Okala. That rough skin guy? What about him? It's the people at Hili Hili. They're doing something that Kane Okala doesn't like. That's why he's back. The people that say he's just a legend, don't believe them. I'll remember that, really. Hope I don't regret this. The rig's out front. Got a GPS system and everything. The location of Dr. Kim's camp's already programmed in. I heard that something weird seems to be going on with the pineapple crop this year. What have you heard about it? It's the Healy Healy. Whatever they're doing up there, it's gonna end up ruining the pineapple fields. The newspapers know the truth. They're just too afraid of the Healy Healy lawyers to write the truth. Well, it was nice meeting you. Mahalo! Great. Well, hopefully Dr. Kim will be able to help me get it out. Uh-oh. Sounds like I missed a call. You have reached Nancy Drew, who is currently unavailable. At the tone, please leave a message. Hi, Nance. It's Joe. Listen, Big Island Mike heard on the radio that the bridge on the road leading to that bug lady's camp just washed out. So I hope you get this message before you get to her place, because if you've already crossed the bridge, it sounds like you won't be able to get back into town for a couple of days. In any case, be careful, and again, if there's anything Frank or I can do, just holler. Take care! <sighs> so, on top of being stuck in a ditch, I'm stranded in the jungle. Well, at least I'm not alone. I mean, I won't be when I find Dr. Kim. Oh my gosh, this place is a mess! What happened? And where's Dr. Kim? A winch!
A tape recorder. There's a tape in it. Looks like it needs to be rewound. I'm Dr. Quigley Kim, and this is an oral record of my activities on the Big Island, beginning with today, March 11th. Hopefully, I'll remember to use this thing every day, but I much prefer writing things down. And frankly, I don't care much for hearing myself on tape. It makes me sound very nasal for some strange reason. Of course, this whole recording thing was my father's idea. I mean, just because he always kept an oral journal when he was in the field, he automatically assumed I'd want to, too. So he practically forced me to... <sighs> There I go again. Well, at least with this thing. When I start digressing, I can just push this button and... Already, I'm forgetting to use this thing. Okay, now it's March 15th. My camp's all set up and my equipment's all ready to go. So tomorrow, I'm gonna start rigging frass traps. I probably should have started doing that today, but I spent the whole morning observing a colony of feral bees. Man, I hope somebody answers the ad my mentor placed in that newsletter. If she could get me an assistant, I could spend the whole day observing whatever insect I want. Oh, would that be cool or what? March 19th. This has never happened to me before, ever. But when I was out checking traps in the jungle today, I got the weirdest feeling that I was being watched. I mean, it was broad daylight and I didn't see anybody or hear anything, but I just suddenly got this creepy feeling that I wasn't alone. Then after about three minutes, it went away. I, you know, it was just weird. It's March 24th. For the past two days now, I've heard this very odd humming sound coming from way deep in the jungle. Okay, to be honest, it sounds more like whispering. One minute it's there, next minute it's gone. And I have no idea what's causing it. I don't even have a theory as to what's causing it. Ugh, I hate that. It's March 28th. Great news. Actually, lots of great news. I just got done with my initial frass jar content analysis, and it looks like something really strange is going on with the Norse Beta Odorata larvae around here. Once I run these numbers through my formula machine, which I'm retrieving from my trunk even as I speak, once I run these numbers, I'll know for sure. And I'm getting an assistant. Somebody named Nancy Drew has agreed to fly out here for a couple of weeks and work for me. Which means I'm on the verge of fame, fortune, and free labor. Woohoo! Is life good or what? tape ran out. What was that? I sure hope Dr. Kim is okay. Dr. Kim, are you here? Hello? Anybody here? Dr. Kim? She's gone. Ugh, I've got a bad feeling about this. Interesting lock. Malachi Herbert Craven, IQ of 182, maintains blog. Solar power. Area code 312. Chicago, maybe? Okay, 
What else do we have in this trunk? A security pass for the Healy Healy Research Center. Maybe someone there knows where Dr. Kim is. Must be Dr. Kim's notes. Phew, looks like Greek to me. Hello, is anybody? The radio doesn't have any power. Nancy, welcome. Use this radio to call me at this frequency, 18.305 QK. No, my name is Nancy Drew. How did you get this number? Well, you see, I... Hello? 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 Hi, Ned. Sorry I hung up on you like that before. Believe it or not, that was the Hardy Boys I saw. They're here, too. No kidding. Doing what? They're on assignment. They're doing a background check on this local surfer girl. Somebody hired them to check out a surfer? And her father, yeah. They're getting paid to check out a Hawaiian surfer girl while you're camping in the jungle chasing insects for free. Hey, Dr. Kim paid my way over here, don't forget. Nancy, in case you're wondering what that thing you're holding is, it's the short end of the stick. Very funny. So what's going on? Dr. Kim is missing. Missing? What do you mean? What happened? I got to her camp, and not only was she not there, but the place had been torn apart. You think she was kidnapped or something? Either that or... What? Some people say this legendary creature named Kane Okala has been going on rampages through the jungle lately. You think some creature got her? No, but... I just wish I knew where she was, that's all. You shouldn't be out there by yourself. I think you should head back into town until she turns up. Can't. The bridge on the road to town washed out behind me on my way out here. Great. That's all from here. Call again, okay? I will. Bye. There, it's out of the ditch. A solar panel. Looks like this is what powers the radio. Hmm, some of the photovoltaic cells are missing. Hi, listen, I found this pass, and I wondered if... I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to put your hands up. Put my hands up? Who are you? Where did you get that pass? Uh, which question would you like me to answer first? That pass was not issued to you. Now where did you get it? I found it. Where? At Dr. Kim's base camp. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm Dr. Kim's temporary research assistant. Today's my first day. Are you... I'm Malachi Craven, of course. I'm the head of this facility. Now explain yourself. I have that pass because when I arrived, Dr. Kim's base camp was all torn up and I couldn't find her anywhere. So I went searching through her stuff for something that might tell me where she is. I thought that since she had that pass, someone here could tell me where she is. Well, you thought wrong. And for your information, that pass was reported missing. She probably stole it weeks ago. You think Dr. Kim stole it? Oh, use your brain! This is a private research facility with highly restricted access. Of course she stole it! All right, that's enough. 
Excuse me? You're jumping all over me when the only thing I did to you was tell you the truth. I know who you are, Dr. Craven. I know you're an incredibly gifted scientist whose work has never been fully appreciated. In fact, as an amateur horticulturist, I would give anything to know what you're doing with the plants in here. But being a genius does not give you the right to be rude. Oh, I'm sorry, young lady. Everything you just said is quite correct. The genius part rings particularly true. How do you know about me? Internet, mostly. Your blog is awesome. Uh, that's true, too. If you're interested in horticulture, why are you assisting an entomologist? She's the friend of a friend of a friend, that sort of thing. And when I heard there was a free round-trip ticket to Hawaii involved... Smart girl. I'm in desperate need of some photovoltaic cells so I can repair a solar panel back at camp. And I know you're a big proponent of solar energy, so could you by any chance spare me, say, nine cells? Tell you what, I'll give you all the cells you need after you harvest at least a dozen seeds from those plants down there. They represent an extremely promising cultivar that I've hybridized. Unfortunately, I've developed some kind of allergy to them, so that just being in the same room with them has me scratching like a dog at a flea circus. My getting seeds from them is out of the question. But since you're here, you can do it. Just pick a few pods, pop them open, and put only viable seeds into the container. To know what I mean by viable, just read the notes that I left down there. No problem. Good. Bring me 12 viable seeds, and those cells are yours. viable seeds, I hope. Finished? Like I said, no problem. Very good. These will do just fine. And so, as I promised, instruct Olsen to put a box of A3 photovoltaic cells into Miss Drew's vehicle as soon as possible. Right away, Dr. Craven. Unfortunately, even after I've destroyed those little green devils, I'm told it'll be some time before this itching stops. Isn't there something you could take for it? I was prescribed an antihistamine, but I'm afraid taking it will make me too sleepy to get any work done. What makes you think Dr. Kim stole that security pass? I, uh, that was just my temper talking. I obviously have no reason to suspect the good doctor of any criminal activity whatsoever. Have you ever met Dr. Kim? Possibly. I don't honestly remember. From what I've read about her research, I have no real desire to meet her, quite frankly. Any chance you could give me a tour of this place? None whatsoever. This is a private facility. I'm under no obligation to put my work on display or explain what I'm doing to anyone. Except my employer, of course. Who's that? He'd rather I not say. Look here, Nancy. You're obviously familiar with me and my previous accomplishments, so I know how exciting all this must be for you, but I'm simply not at liberty to discuss my current project, though it is truly spectacular. Sorry. Guess I'd better go look for Dr. Kim. Marvelous idea.
where these new cells go must have something to do with the numbers on them. But what? There, it's working. Power, that helps. This is Nancy Drew calling Dr. Quigley Kim. Dr. Kim, are you there? Miss Quigley Kim, Nancy, is that you? Yes, I've been worried about you. I've been worried about you. Your camp is a mess. Someone ransacked it. Well, as you are a camp, move out here. <sighs> Where exactly are you? You can see me at Big Cedar Rock. The exact location is north, four hours, by west, five degrees, one minute. Could you please repeat that? And be sure to bring my... Dr. Kim, I can barely hear you. Could you repeat those coordinates, please? I rarely get to you over now. No, wait! I still don't know where you are. Dr. Kim! Nancy Drew, calling Dr. Quigley Kim. Come in, please. Great. All I heard was green trigger rock or something. How am I supposed to figure out where that is? Hello? Hi, Joe. It's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? Well, after I finally got Big Island Mike to give me the keys to the car Dr. Kim had arranged for me, I started driving. Whoa. So what did Dr. Kim say when you told her somebody or some thing had torn up her camp? Frankly, I'm not sure she heard me. The radio connection we had was really bad. In fact, she rattled off the coordinates of where she is now so I could plug them into my GPS, but all I heard was north 19 degrees 20-something. I think she said she was at Green Trigger Rock, but I could be wrong about that, too. I don't suppose you'd happen to have a map of the island, would you? No, but I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I'll even ask Big Island Mike. I'm still waiting for a chance to do some snooping around his desk. Well, if you find out anything, give me a call. Remember, what Dr. Kim said sounded like Green Trigger Rock. Green Trigger Rock. Will do. Are you going to be able to get back here with the bridge washed out like that? No, but I'll be okay. That bridge is the least of my worries. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Hey, what's up? Are you familiar with a place in the jungle around here called Green Trigger Rock or something like that? Never heard of it. And I know this island better than anybody. So if I haven't heard of it, trust me, there's no such place. How long have you been in this business? Five years, give or take. Pua's idea. She saw this whole extreme vacation thing coming. I thought she was Papule, but turns out she was right. We've been making money since day one. My daughter is one smart wahine. What happened to her mom, if you don't mind my asking? Died when Pua was ten. Pretty rough on her. Only way she got through it was by going out on her board every day. And look at her. She's a champ. Future's as bright as they come. Turned into your basic all-around good kid, huh? With Pua, what you see is what you get. Just wants to surf. And be the best in the world while she's at it. Think you could explain this try-it-and-trade-it system of yours again? Real simple. Over at the necklace-making table, there's pictures of the different necklaces you can make out of shells, okay? You collect shells, you make something, you turn it in, you get whatever the picture says it's worth in Big Island Bucks. You get enough Big Island Bucks, you can buy some fishing gear and bait. You go fishing, you catch something, you turn it in, you get paid what it's worth. The better the bait you buy, the bigger the fish you catch, and the more Big Island Bucks you get. The more Big Island Bucks you get, the more stuff you can do in here. You see, a never-ending circle of fun. Everybody wins.
Well, hey, when can I start? You can put the shells you find in here. Whenever you're ready to turn something in, necklace, fish, whatever, go see Pua, not me. She's in charge of doling out the Big Island box. You're always in here working. Don't you ever get to get out and enjoy paradise yourself? Well, if somebody'd catch me six Ulua, I'd have an excuse to drive him into the market in Hilo and on the way back do a little body surfing at this great little beach I know. I'm game. What are Ulua? Big shorefish, real good eating. Just so happens I got their favorite food right here. Well, get ready to take a little time off, big guy, because I am on it. Hey, what's up? Well, better get going. Paradise awaits. Later. Whoa, earthquake! Want something else? Well, hang in there. Have fun. Want something else? Well, better get going. Paradise awaits. Have fun! Hey Joe, ready for another lesson? Still recovering from the last one. You did swallow a lot of water out there. Listen, how about we keep that our little secret, okay? Hey look, flailing around like a drowning puppy your first time out or two is nothing to be ashamed of. Happens to everybody. Even you? Well, no. I didn't almost drown until the first time I tried shooting the curl on the pipeline. But then, I'm not like everybody. I'm ten times better. <laughs> but hey. You're doing great, so is your brother. In fact, he hasn't come off his board once. Of course, that might change when he actually stands up on it. Frank hasn't stood up yet? Oops, I probably shouldn't have said that. Look, how about we change the subject? Are Frank and I your only pupils right now? Pretty much. You guys are the only excursions Dad's got going this week. I coach some local kids, but they've got finals. Ever wish your dad had chosen some other way to make a living? Heck no. I, I mean... We don't live in a mansion or anything, but we got food, we got clothes, Dad gets to show off his island, and I get to surf. Far as I'm concerned, we got everything we need. What else do you like to do besides surf? Nothing. Aw, oh, come on. You like to ride motorcycles, go to wild parties, pig out on shave ice? Tell me. I surf till it gets too dark, I come home, I eat, I go to bed, I get up, I surf till I gotta start teaching, I help my dad, that's it. That's my life. Think that'll change when you win the championship? You bet it will. My dad told me if I win, he'll hire somebody to take my place here, which means I'll finally be able to surf all day. See, what you don't seem to understand is that I get all the kicks I'll ever need out there on my board. See you around the campus. It's been real. Joe, what are you doing here? You should be out there surfing. Pua says you're a natural. She does? Oh, come on. She probably says that about all her students. No, she doesn't. In fact, I can't repeat what she says about some of them. So, how'd you like that earthquake? No big deal. Got my heart going, that's for sure. Pele must be mad about something. Pele? Hawaiian goddess of fire. Her home is in Kilauea Volcano. When she's mad, she makes the ground shake. When she's really mad, she sends lava down the mountain to gobble up her enemies. Who are her enemies? People who do bad things to her island, or fail to show her the proper respect, or people she just plain doesn't like. Who knows? Compared to Pele, Kane Okala is a noisy little fly. He's nothing. But enough about Pele. Go! Get outside! You're in paradise! Enjoy! Well, better get going. Paradise awaits. Later! Hey, what's going on? You feel the earthquake? Yeah, wasn't that great? 
Sure, it was a blast, if you don't count the sheer terror part. I love earthquakes. It's like standing up on a big, huge roller coaster. Your father thinks Pele caused that earthquake. Oh, it figures. My father's got one foot in the present and the other foot in the past. I don't know how he can balance. What do you think about all this Kane Okala stuff? I'd rather not say. You'd laugh. So you believe he's real? Look, first the Healy Healy Center closes its doors to visitors and gets real secretive about what it's doing up there. Then something goes wrong with the pineapple crop. Coincidence? I don't think so. I mean, Kani Okala has shown up before when somebody endangered the islands. Why shouldn't I believe that he's back? He showed up before? When? My dad said that after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, people saw Kane Okala all over the place, including my grandfather. You gonna call my grandfather a liar? I'm saying that sometimes people, especially superstitious people, sometimes they see what they want to see. Well, I'm not the least bit superstitious, and I swear to you, I have seen Kane Okala. Now, Amscre, I gotta work. One Ulua down, five to go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Thank <laughs> you. 
Number six, that ought to do it. Hey, what's up? Those fish you wanted me to catch? Well, here they are. What do you think? Hey, you did it! Wasn't sure you were ready for them, but looks like I'm gonna have to stock the store with Ulua bait from now on. Tell Pua as soon as I'm done here, I'm driving up to Hilo. Last I saw, she was still trying to teach Frank how to surf. Your brother's a slow learner, huh? Welcome to my world, Mr. Mapu. Have a nice drive. at last. That's not going to unlock this door. March 5th. Delivery from JK exclamation point exclamation point. Wonder who or what JK is. If I were Green Trigger Rock, where would I be? Wait a minute. Three Finger Rock. That's what that bug doctor must have said. Three Finger Rock. I'd better call Nancy with these coordinates. You have reached Nancy Drew, who is currently unavailable. At the tone, please leave a message. Hey, Nance. Good news. I figured out that Dr. Kim isn't at Green Trigger Rock. She's at Three Finger Rock. The coordinates are north 19 degrees, 24 hours, 42 minutes, by west 155 degrees, 9 hours, 1 minute. Gosh, I'm good. Hey! Ugh. Ugh. Hey, Nance, good news. 
I figured out that Dr. Kim isn't at Green Trigger Rock. She's at Three Finger Rock. The coordinates are north 19 degrees, 24 hours, 42 minutes, by west 155 degrees, 9 hours, 1 minute. Gosh, I'm good. Thank you, Joe. What is that sound? Are you Dr. Cam? Yes, your timing couldn't be better. Nancy Drew, I presume? That's me. Terrific, because if you're Nancy, then you know who I am, and we can skip any further time-consuming introductory rigmarole and get right to work. Sound good? Uh, sure. Good. Now, I'm roped into this tree so I can observe a nest of parasitic wasps. I believe it's a nest of Pristomeris hawaiianus, but Hymenoptera aren't really my thing, so I could be wrong. As you know, I'm much more interested in Lepidoptera, the larva of which many wasps prey upon. Specifically, I'm studying Norsa beta odorata, which, interestingly enough, are carnivores themselves. Now, to my knowledge, the ichneumonid wasps I'm observing do not parasitize the larva of the Norsa beta, although I... Ah, nuts. Dr. Kim, is something wrong? Well, yeah, something's wrong. I no longer have any idea what I'm talking about. And please, just call me Quigley. Hearing someone call me Dr. Kim makes me think of my father. He was a herpetologist. He collected snakes. Whereas I, from a very young age, collected insects, a hobby which he wholeheartedly endorsed. Of course, this was because he was secretly feeding my insects to his snakes. And to this day, I hate snakes. There are no snakes in Hawaii, you know. No native species, at least. Nuts. If you're going to work for me, you cannot let this happen. What? L what happened? In case you hadn't noticed, I'm totally off subject here. I have a very bad habit of digressing. So from here on out, it's your job to keep me on task and focused. Understood? Okay. Good. Now, let's get to work, shall we? Where's the clipboard? What clipboard? I told you to bring my clipboard when we talked on the radio. I couldn't hear you. You kept cutting in and out. I don't know, Nancy. You're getting off to a pretty shaky start here. The sooner you get my clipboard, the quicker we can get started. Oh, shoot. I forgot to tell her that somebody trashed your camp.
Quigley, could you come down here? You've got my clipboard. Good. Let me have it. The first page is gone. Why'd you tear it off? I, I didn't tear it off. Then where is it? I don't know. Nancy, I asked you to get my clipboard. How could you screw up something as simple as that? I didn't tear that page off. Wh whoever trashed your camp did. Trash my camp? What are you talking about? When I got there, your camp was a mess. It still is. It's like someone came in and just tore the place apart. Oh. I tried to tell you over the radio, but the transmission kept breaking up. Well, life goes on. That missing page was critical, but fortunately, it was not irreplaceable. I'll just have to collect and analyze all the data again. Or should I say, you'll have to. No problem. You'll need to locate all my frass jars and empty each one into a color-coded baggie. Each jar will have baggies hanging nearby. Then return to my base camp, sort the contents, record your counts, run them through my formula, and report back to me. Uh, could you maybe repeat that? It's all on the clipboard. Just do exactly what my notes say and you'll be fine. Don't breathe a word of this to anyone, but I'm on the verge of making a huge discovery here, Nancy. Huge! If the figure you arrive at confirms the one I arrived at yesterday, we are talking major, big-time, worldwide fame. We'll be on Oprah, late-night talk shows. Somebody might even make a movie about this. In fact, I met this producer when I was in L.A. last year. Well, he hasn't produced anything yet, but he has this thing about butterflies, so as you can imagine, we hit it off. Quigley. What? You're digressing. Oh, right. Well, just get going. I'll give you the whole scoop after you do that analysis. Fame and fortune await. Woohoo! Note and identify proximate vegetation. Record code in analysis grid on clipboard. I'm going to have to identify the plants that traps are hanging next to? Yikes. Look at all those webs. I wonder what made them, and why are there so many? Wonder what the deal is with this guy, and what's with all the animals on his teeth? microscope lens is broken. How am I going to do all that press sorting stuff without a microscope? Hmm, where could I find a spare lens around here? your 
business, please. Hi, I'd like to see Dr. Craven. Dr. Craven isn't seeing anybody right now, so just back your car up, turn around, and leave. No, no, Dr. Craven will see me, really. Just call him, please. <sighs> Dr. Craven? What? The young lady who... Dr. Craven, it's me, Nancy Drew. I know you're busy, but I really enjoyed talking to you before. Could I come in, just for a few minutes? Let her in. Somewhat to my surprise, I find that I actually don't mind talking to you. You see, I have a niece back in Philadelphia who's just about your age. Nice girl. Spunky. Insisted on majoring in English or sociology or some such drivel, but a very bright girl nonetheless. Unfortunately, her father, my brother, and I don't get along, so I... I don't get to see her anymore. Anyway, what can I do for you? I need a microscope lens to complete this job Dr. Kim gave me. Only hers is broken. Do you have one I could use? Of course, but I'm not running a charity here. If you want it, you'll have to earn it. The plants down below need to be fertilized. Think you could handle that? You bet. Good. Here's the key to the enclosure housing the plants I want fertilized. Don't even think about leaving before you're finished. They need to be fed now. If you make an error, it will be immediately apparent, and needless to say, I will be extremely upset. Got it. That should do it. What is it now? I fertilize those plants. Good job. The microscope lens is yours. Anything else? I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Yes, well, the bugs await. Go. Yes? He did what? No, 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 no! Those seedlings were irreplaceable! How could anyone be that stupid? Oh, tell me his name. Well, you tell Mr. Fighterman that he is fired. If he isn't off the premises in two minutes, I will come out there and throw him over the fence myself. Yikes. This is where the lens goes. Looks like this has a built-in scale. Hello? Frank? Oh, hi, it's Nancy. Sorry, guess I expected Joe to answer. Well, as it happens, Joe's at the clinic getting treated for a concussion. What? What happened? Someone jumped him while he was poking around Big Island Mike's Immersion Center. Just after he left that message for you, in fact. Turned around and wham! Gets knocked unconscious by someone swinging a big wooden mask. 
Is he going to be okay? He'll be fine. The doctors are just doing their usual observation thing. Joe knows the drill. So what's going on with you? Well, let's see. Phew. This Quigley lady sounds like she's going to be a real taskmaster. Anything I can do to help? I could use some help identifying some of the plants that the frass jars are hanging next to. I'll take a look around here, see what kind of information I can dig up. I'll let you know what I find out. Great. That's it for now. Talk to you later. Richard Aikens. Hello, Mr. Aikens. This is Frank Hardy. Calling from Hawaii? Yes, of course. In fact, I just got out of a meeting in which Puamapu was the main topic of discussion. Marketing is enthusiastic about using her, but they need to move quickly. So, if there's anything unsavory about the Mapus, I must know now. Unfortunately, my brother was in the process of looking around Mike Mapu's office when he was knocked unconscious. Good heavens, is he all right? The clinic wants to keep him under observation for a while, that's all. The bad part is, he didn't see who did it. Do you think the Mapus had something to do with it? I guess it's possible. I intend to talk to them the first chance I get. Please, you must move quickly. Time is of the essence. Nothing else to report. Keep me posted. Frank, how's your brother? You back from the clinic yet? No, they wanted to keep him under observation for a while. But he'll be fine. Joe's nothing if not hard-headed. Any idea who clobbered him? Like I told the cops, probably just some bum who wandered in off the beach looking for cash. Does that happen a lot? A couple times a year. As soon as they see me, they run like heck, but today I wasn't around, so... <laughs> Somebody figured he'd help himself. Is anything missing? Nope, not a thing. Look, whoever the guy was, he's no richer, I'm no poorer. He's gone, I'm here, no big deal. Well, except for your brother getting walloped like that. Do the police have any leads? Nah, real low priority case for them. The one guy I talked to barely looked around. But hey, you want to look around? Play detective like on TV? You go right ahead. Thanks for your help. Catch you later. Want something else? Is this your pawn ticket? I found it over there. Never seen it before. Then maybe it belonged to the guy who clobbered Joe. Or maybe it's been lying there for weeks. The guy who cleans this place doesn't exactly keep it spotless. Namely, me. Good talking to you. Anytime. Hey Frank, how's Joe doing? He's still at the clinic, but he'll be fine. Nothing like that's ever happened to a guest before, ever. You're not gonna like sue us or anything, are you? Nah. That's a relief. The guy who clobbered Joe, what do you think he was doing in your father's office? You know, you sound just like the police. They asked me the same thing. That's because my brother and I are actually undercover detectives. Yeah, right. Like I told the police, I have no idea who that guy was or what he was up to. Think I could rent some snorkeling equipment? Long as you've got 30 Big Island bucks, you can. Oops. Guess I'm gonna have to wait. Need anything else? See you in a bit. Have fun. You can't do that! What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. You've come to my senses, that's all. I'm not gonna let you ruin everything. You hear me? I'm not. You'll do what I tell you. No, I'm never going to listen to you ever again! You put back here! Pull up! Hey, what's going on? That was some argument you and your dad had. You heard us? I think everyone within 10 square miles heard you. My dad can act like such a loser sometimes. So can mine. What did your dad do? Let's talk about something else, okay? Guess I'll get out of your hair. Have fun.
Whoa! That eel means business. Perfect match. Perfect match. Hey, what's going on? Got some more necklaces for you. Let's have a look. Nice job. Here are your Big Island Bucks. Pleasure doing business with you. Got you some more fish. Let's see. Looking good. There you go. Okay, what else? See you in a bit. Let me know when you want to try surfing again. This looks like it might be kind of fun. Computer. 
Player one. Computer one. Player one. Computer. Player one. Computer. Player one. Computer. Player. Computer. Player. One. Computer. One. Player. One. Computer. Player. Computer. Player. Computer. Hey, how about that? I won something. Please insert a Big Island Buck. Hey, what's going on? I couldn't help but overhear you and Pua arguing earlier. Anything serious? Father-daughter stuff. No big thing. Forget about it. Kinda reminded me of some of the fights Joe and I've had. I said forget about it! Pawn shop, this is... 
Mrs. Davy. I found a receipt from your shop that somebody dropped. I'd kind of like to find that person, so I just wondered if you could maybe tell me who you wrote it out to. Sure. What's the number? It's receipt number 57441. Hi, Golden. Do you know this guy? That depends on why you're asking. Turns out the stuff I bought off of him was stolen. Cops are looking for this guy too. Name's Johnny Kuto. Apparently he's got a pretty nice career going for him as a freelance thief. Address he gave me turned out to be bogus. Gave me a cell phone number too, but he never picks up. Think you could give me Kuto's phone number? Got it right here. 808-555-9258. Good luck getting him to return your call. What kind of stuff did Kudo sell to you? Laptop, digital camera, and a PDA. Police said it was smaller than the stuff he usually goes after. Probably just needed some pocket change. Do you have any idea why Johnny Kudo would be hanging around a business called Big Island Mike's Immersion Excursions? Police mentioned that he's uh, always looking for places to hide what he steals until it's safe to deliver it. Maybe somebody at this excursion thing is helping him out. Hey, I really appreciate your help. Anytime. Mahalo. The person you have called is not available. At the tone, please leave a message. Hey, Johnny. You don't know me, but you know my brother. He's the one you slugged when you were at Big Island Mike's. I know what you two have been up to, so if you're smart, you'll give me a call. 280-555-7263. Hello? Hey, Nancy, it's Frank. Hi, were you able to dig up any info on plants? You betcha. Great, let's hear it. Well... The Puhala tree is about 30 feet tall with long leaves and support roots. The Hala Pepe tree has smooth gray bark and long skinny leaves. The Aali'i plant has small green leaves and distinctive purple clusters. The Koa tree is very tall with sickle-shaped leaves. The Wheelie Wheelie tree drops its leaves, then blooms in the summer. Now Paka is a shrub with white flowers that look like they've been torn in half. The Kalu'i is a shrub with fuzzy oval-shaped leaves. The banana plant has huge leaves and bears, ta-da, bananas. The candlenut tree is bushy with clusters of tiny white flowers that develop into green nut-like jobs. And myconia, boo, is an extremely invasive tree with big leaves that are green on top and purple on the bottom and have three veins. Okay, anything else you want to know? Uh, no. Not right now. Good. How about I talk to you later? Deal.
I can't go anywhere. I haven't inserted the clipboard into that formula machine thing yet. Wonder what this thing does. Eighteen. That's nice. Nineteen thousand four hundred fifty six. All right. deal is with all those webs at Kapu K. Don't worry, they were made by North Beta larvae, not arachnids. I mean, spiders. I'm not sure why they like that cave so much. Must have something to do with their food supply. Oh, I, I was just curious. I'll get back to work. Quigley? Well? I'm all done. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Okay, tell me. Well, the number your formula machine came up with was 119,456. <laughs> yes, yes, it really is true. I've stumbled upon the biggest bloom of Norsa Beta larva ever recorded. We're going to be famous, Nancy, and with any luck, rich as heck. Way to go. Thank you. I just wish I knew what you were talking about. You just confirmed that for some reason, the Norsa Beta Odorata in this area, maybe on the whole island, are reproducing at an unheard of rate. What are Norsa Beta Odorata? It's a kind of moth. And to have it suddenly be producing ten times more larvae than usual? It's huge! Nothing like this has ever happened before, anywhere. It's as if you woke up one morning and found a thousand baby robins in your front yard. It just doesn't happen. Okay, you've confirmed what is happening. Now we need to figure out why it's happening. You need to analyze the contents of those frass jars. The notes on my clipboard will tell you how to go about it. We need to know what all those Norsa Beta caterpillars have been eating. Uh, you mean the stuff in those jars is, I mean, came from caterpillars? Of course, they're frass jars. But before you start your analysis, you need to get a sample of whatever it is that Malachi Craven is secretly growing up there at the Healy Healy even if it means sneaking in. See if that's what those caterpillars have been eating. Something big's going on here, Nancy. Let's make history and find out what! your business. Oh, it's you. What is it now? It's been wonderful talking to you. Good luck entomologizing.
Dr. Craven? He's sound asleep. He must have decided to take that antihistamine after all. Perfect. Oh my gosh! This is the page that was torn off Quigley's clipboard! Which means the person who trashed your camp must have been Dr. Craven? All right, looks like employee number 14-667-93, otherwise known as Fighterman, was assigned to locker 13. The combination is R4L2L7R9. Keep those men in yellow off my back. There's about a jillion plants in here. How am I supposed to know which one to take a sample from? We 
Maybe this will help me figure out what plan I'm looking for. Suppliers. That doesn't sound very helpful. Accounts. That doesn't sound very helpful either. Extract codes. This sounds promising. Shipping. Now that's more like it. Let's see what this place has been sending to whom lately. Richard Akins at Akins Biotech? That's who hired Frank and Joe Hardy to check out the Mapus. FERC-21 was extracted from an unexpected but fortuitous mutation, which I've managed to successfully propagate. Have it tested immediately because I do believe this is the one. Mutation, huh? Something tells me that's the plan I need to get a sample from. Hmm. Looks like a list of substances and the names of the beds containing the plants they came from. Yes, it says here that FERC-21 was extracted from the plants in bed HH-3333. And according to that note from Dr. Craven, those plants are apparently mutants. Stay out of sight from here on out. Okay, little plant, this won't hurt a bit. There's that weird whispering again. Uh-oh. The color of the leaf sample from the Healy Healy doesn't match the color of the frass sample. Oh, I guess I'd better go tell Quigley. have been eating is not what Dr. Craven's been growing at the Healy Healy. The samples didn't match? No. What should I do now? Okay, listen up. 
Open my pack down there, take out the container of canopy samples I've collected, and see if one of them matches the frass sample. Got that? Got it! I don't need to analyze that. Definitely not blue. That doesn't match. Not a match. Not a match. That doesn't match. A match? So, looks like those caterpillars have been eating fritillated flag beetles, whatever they are. Have you got something? Well, it looks to me like those caterpillars have been eating nothing but fritillated flag beetles. Fritillated flag beetles? No, no, that's not possible. I've never even heard of a fritillated flag beetle. The fritillated flag beetle is a relatively minor species in this area. But if your analysis is correct, that means they're multiplying at an even greater rate than the Norsebana are. The question is, why? Fame and fortune just got put on hold, Nancy. We can't go public with this until I figure out what the heck is going on. Where are you going? Up. I do my best thinking when my feet aren't touching the ground. Don't ask me why. I've carried you long enough, Nancy. You're on your own. Oh, wait a sec. I know what you can do. There's a metal ring inside my pack. I found it at Kapu Cave when I was setting out frog traps. Maybe you can figure out what it's for. Darn things got me stumped. Okay, I'll check it out. A nose ring, of course! I can move his teeth now! Hello? Hi Frank, before I forget, I came across this wall that has this really creepy face on it and all these pictures of animals carved into its teeth. And I'd kind of like to know why it's there. Well, if I come across anything that involves a creepy face with critters on its teeth, I'll give you a call. Great. That's it for now. Talk to you later.
Richard Aikens. Hello, Mr. Aikens. This is Frank Hardy again. What have you found out? Time to get back to work. Keep up the good work. Hello? This is Kudo. What do you want? Mostly, I want to know why you slugged my brother. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the thing you got going with Mapu. Hey, I've got nothing going with that overgrown jerk. The guy double-crossed me, okay? We had a deal. I came through, he didn't. So I went looking for a way to even the score. Your brother was in the wrong place at the wrong time, that's all. What was it Mapu paid you to steal for him? You don't know anything about this, do you? Hey, I know all about it. In fact... No, wait! Hello? Hello? You there? Shoot. Hey, what's going on? I'm not sure how to tell you this, but I have reason to believe your dad is involved in something he shouldn't be. What do you mean? Like what? Like hiding, or maybe even fencing stolen property for someone. What? Look, it's a real, real long story, and I can't prove anything, so you don't really have to worry. But if he was, say, trying to hide a bunch of stuff for somebody, where do you suppose he'd put it? Oh my gosh, the chamber. That's what he's been doing in there. This island is riddled with lava tubes, tunnels made by ancient volcanoes. They go all over the place. My dad knows them all. Lately, he's been spending a lot of time in one of them. He calls it the chamber because it's so big, but he refused to tell me what he's been doing. I was going to sneak down there and see for myself, but the earthquake caused this huge cave-in near the entrance. I can't get past it, but neither can my dad. So, whatever he's been keeping down there is still there. There's no other way to get into this chamber thing? Yes, there is, from the water. It says so on this old chart my dad has. Think I could see it? The chart? Sure. The problem is, you can't just snorkel to the entrance. You have to ride different currents to get there. The chart supposedly says how to do that, but I've never been able to figure it out. But if you can figure it out, you might be able to find the entrance. But if you do, and it turns out that my dad is doing something illegal, I want you to promise me that you won't call the police without talking to me first. Deal. I promise I won't call the police. Say it. I promise I won't call the police unless I talk to you first. Okay? Okay. The chart's in that old trunk in the immersion center. To open it, you'll need to know what my father calls his favorite flavor of shave ice. I can never remember, so you'll have to ask him. Just don't make me sorry I trusted you. Hey, what's going on? Ever heard of a guy named Johnny Kudo? Never heard of him. Think Pua knows him? She might have gone out with him or something. Why are you asking? I think he may be the guy who clobbered Joe. Playing Kojak, huh? Well, I wish I knew something about this Kudo guy, but I don't. I'm curious. What's your favorite flavor of shave ice? Tell you what. I'm kind of hungry, so I'm going to make you guess. You make me a shave ice and bring it back here. If it's my favorite flavor, or combination of flavors, I'll tell you. If it's not, well, you'll just have to keep making them till you get it right. I think I can handle that. Like I always say, a busy customer is a happy customer. Thanks for your help. Catch you later. Feeny. Now I'll just take this to Big Island Mike and hope that it's his favorite flavor. Want something else? Got a shave ice for you to try. Let's have it. You did it. That was my favorite flavor combination. Lime, coconut, and mango. I call it Honey Awa. That's Hawaiian for sour kiss. Good talking to you. Catch you later. Weird-looking dude. Wait a minute. A creepy face with creatures on its teeth. This could be the same face Nancy saw. Hello? Hey, Nance. It's me. 
Listen, remember that creepy face you said you saw? The one with all the animals on its teeth? Yeah? Well, I just came across a drawing of a creepy face that has a mouthful of teeth with animals on them. Tell me about the animals. Well, there's an eel, a turtle, a shark, a manta ray, a porcupine fish, an octopus, a crab, and an urchin. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll go back and take another look at it. It has something to do with this old map I found, so I have the feeling it's important. Then I'll definitely take another look at it. Thanks, Nance. See ya. I'd better call and tell Frank. You have reached Joe Hardy and or Frank Hardy. Only we're not available. At the tone, please leave a message. Frank, it's Nancy. Hey, remember that creepy face that had been carved into a wall? The one with all the pictures on his teeth? Well, thanks to that list of animals you gave me, the face opened up. And I'm about to explore whatever's behind it. I don't know if or how this helps you, but I just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, I'm going in, so wish me luck. Phew, I feel like I'm in a sauna. That's lava. No wonder it's so hot in here. I wonder if these pictures tell some kind of story. Frank, it's Nancy. Hey, remember that creepy face that had been carved into a wall? The one with all the pictures on his teeth? Well, thanks to that list of animals you gave me, the face opened up. And I'm about to explore whatever's behind it. I don't know if or how this helps you, but I just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, I'm going in, so wish me luck. Hmm, if the pictures on that old current chart helped her, maybe whatever she just did to open up that face will somehow help me. Maybe I'll give this to Joe as a get well present. Maybe I'll give this to Joe as a get well present.
Aikens. Hello, Mr. Aikens. This is Frank Hardy again. What have you found out? Pua says her father has been acting very secretive lately. Says he may be hiding something in an underground chamber. Hiding something? Hiding what? I knew you were going to ask me that. For crying out loud, Frank, find out. The press is actually starting to listen to that blowhard. As soon as I find the chamber, I'll let you know. I'll thank you not to call me again, unless and until you have found out what Mapu is up to. told me about must be in there. Those things are covered with tiny beetles. Man, whatever's inside those canisters, those beetles are going for it. Big time. Frank, what are you doing here? I, uh, well, Pua sent me. She gave me a map. What is all this? A huge, terrible mistake, that's what it is. I've made Pele mad. Dad? How did you get in here? I finally found a lava tube that bypasses the main tunnel. Pua? You followed me? I had to find another way in here. So I let you figure out that chart, and then yes, I followed you. It's over, Pua. I'm dumping those things right now. Dad, no! We're in too deep. We've got to go through with it now. Wait a minute. You're in this whatever it is together? If and when the Healy Healy Center shuts down, the land it's on reverts to us. Land we could turn right around and sell to developers. So I used Johnny Kudo to steal us some chemicals that would make insects start destroying the pineapples. And made it sound like Kane Okala was back to keep people out of the jungle so they wouldn't see us spraying. And then we spread the rumor that whatever was killing the pineapples was the Healy Healy's fault. My father owes a lot of money to some really bad people. That's why we did it. And if you could just not tell anyone about this, everything will be fine. No, poor. Pele destroyed the tunnel for a reason. She was telling us to stop. No, poor. Pele destroyed the tunnel for a reason. She was telling us to stop. It's Frank. No, Pua. It's over. The earthquake was a warning. This isn't right, and if we don't stop next, she'll destroy us. You see? You see? Frank, are you all right? Hey, Nance. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm okay. Be kind of nice to get back on solid ground, though. Any ideas? Jump from rock to rock and head for the stairs in front of you. The ones behind Big Island Mike. But be careful. A rock that's there one minute may not be there the next. Hurry, Frank. Big Island Mike is heading for the other set of stairs. If he gets out before you do, he'll get away.
Oh man, I've never been so glad to see solid ground in my life. Nice work, Nan. Tell that to them. All the time we spent on this thing wasted. I should have just gone surfing. And I should have just gone with you. Big Island Mike and Pua finally made it to safety, and all of us managed to get out of the cave using the lava tube that Mike had discovered. Much to their credit, he and Pua turned themselves in immediately, although it took a while for the authorities to figure out exactly what to charge them with. As for what they had done, here's how Big Island Mike explained it. Desperate to pay off the loan sharks to whom he owed a lot of money, Big Island Mike remembered something. The land that Healy Healy Research Facility was on used to belong to his aunt. She willed it to the foundation that built the facility with the stipulation that the land would go to Mike if and when the Healy Healy ever closed its doors. And so he set out to force the Healy Healy out of business, knowing that once the land was his, he could sell it and pay off all his debts. First, capitalizing on what he knew about pineapples, he used to work for a pineapple grower. Big Island Mike hired Johnny Kudo to steal canisters of pheromones for him. He knew that when sprayed in the jungle, these pheromones would cause an explosion in the population of the tiny and normally benign fritillated flag beetle. To lower their risk of being seen, the Mapu spread the rumor that Connie Okala was once again prowling the island. Then they sprayed the chemicals, and soon fritillated flag beetles were everywhere. Dr. Kim finally figured out that the weird whispering noise I had heard was the beetles rubbing their little legs together in some kind of greeting ritual. Soon, the beetle larvae, which are practically microscopic, started feeding on the local pineapples. And when it became apparent that something strange was going on with the pineapple crop, the Mapus began circulating the rumor that the Healy Healy was to blame. And their plan almost worked. The rumor made one of the Healy Healy's current owners, Richard Aiken, so nervous that he hired the Hardy Boys to dig up something, anything that he could use to discredit the Mapus and shut them up. And if word had gotten out that Malachi Craven, who it turns out is the one who tore Dr. Kim's camp up in a fit of anger mismanagement, was working with plant mutations, public pressure may have indeed caused the Healy Healy to close its doors. But thanks to Frank and Joe and Dr. Kim and yours truly, the Mapu's plot was exposed, and the fritillated flag beetle population quickly fell to its normal size, as did that of the Norso Beta Odorata moth. So, how did I spend the rest of my time on the Big Island? Well, let's just say when it comes to cleaning frass jars, I am an expert. Bad things have been happening to the guests at Icicle Creek Lodge. They come for winter fun, like ice skating, cross-country skiing, and snowshoeing. But some leave, fearing for their lives. Of course, the lodge is located deep in the wilds of the Canadian Rockies, and it is the dead of an unusually cold, snowy winter. But is the lodge simply unlucky? Is it the target of some mysterious curse? Or is someone behind these strange events? Or does it have something to do with the elusive wolf that haunts the surrounding hills, howling before each new disaster? Help me find out in my next adventure, The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. <laughs>